Today I'm just going to quickly discuss um, what is an ASBV and an index. So the long and short of farm production is that we're aiming to um, manage um, environment and genetics to then identify uh, performance. So it's all about uh, the interaction between the environment and the genetics um, to then get the best performance out of the animals or um, the production system that we're working in. So if we start to think about what are some of the things that impact an animal's performance, we know that um, if an animal um, is in a different paddock, so they're uh, growing up on lucerne compared to growing up um, in a natural pasture paddock, that their feed base is very different and this can impact their performance. Uh, we also know that age impacts performance, so an animal that's born at the beginning of a lambing period compared to born at the end of a lambing period, uh, that difference in age uh, can really impact how much that animal actually weighs at weaning time. Uh, if an animal is born as a singler or a twin, uh, we already know that simply uh, if an animal is born as a twin, they'll cut 7% less wool over their lifetime purely because they're a twin, not because of their genetic performance. And dam age, if an animal is a maiden uh, compared to a, a four-year-old ewe in her peak production, uh, this is going to impact how she raises her lamb um, and the lamb is going to have a provo be provided a, a better maternal environment from the ewe in her peak production. Disease and parasites will impact an animal's performance. An animal um, that is immunocompromised will perform um, different compared to an animal that's not impacted by disease or parasites. And then also we're interested in the genes that they carry. So how an animal, um, is, what they're uh, tr uh, uh, transforming and passing on to their progeny and how those animals are performing. So when we're thinking about um, an animal's performance, we also have what's called heritability. Uh, heritability is how much of that trait that we uh, see is due to genetics compared to due to environment. So a highly heritable trait um, is something that we can easily see and pass on to, it, to their progeny. So a good example of this is fleece traits. Um, many producers have been able to make good um, gains in fleece traits just by selecting on what they can see because it's highly heritable. Um, however, if we have a trait that is lowly heritable, it means that uh, there is a lot more environmental noise impacting um, what we see for that trait. So a good example of that is fertility. Uh, animals, um, fertility is impacted by disease, um, weather events, environment, predators, um, and it is quite difficult to um, determine what's due to environment and what's due to genetics. So it is a low heritable trait. So then how do we calculate an ASBV? Um, we look at an animal's individual performance, the performance of their siblings, uh, their sire and their dam, correlated traits, so the relationships between different traits. We take into account the environment they're living in, uh, the heritability of the trait, and we put all this together, information together to create an ASBV or an Australian sheep breeding value. And now we're also including genomic information uh, as well in the calculation. So an ASBV is a genetic benchmarking tool. It was based around zero uh, back in 1990. Uh, we also have negative ASBVs, so worm egg count or shear force, for example. Um, they, we want a more negative value. Um, worm egg count, you want less, less eggs, so you want the number to be more negative. So negative breeding values are not always bad. Uh, the accuracy that is used under a breeding value is a reflection of the amount of information that we, is being used. So the higher the accuracy, the more information we know about that animal. And when we use ASBVs, it's better to compare against the current average because from 1990 until now, we've made a lot of genetic progress and the average has changed. We can do this through looking at percentile bands. So for this particular animal, um, for yearling weight, for example, his ASBV is 8 kilos better than the average back in 1990, but the current average is three kilos, so he's five kilos better than the average, uh, so his progeny will be two and a half kilos um, better than the average. So what are some of the ASBVs we have available? Uh, we have breeding values in the major production areas, growth, carcass, reproduction, wool, health and eating quality. So a few examples, we have live weight, um, eye muscle and fat for carcass, number of lambs born, number of lambs weaned for reproduction. 
uh, fleece weight, fibre diameter, staple strength and length for wool, um, worm egg count, breech wrinkle, breech cover, dags for health traits, uh, and intramuscular fat and shear force for eating quality. How we write ASBVs, so we always we can separate ASBVs into a number of age stages. Um, so we have birth, weaning, post weaning, yearling, hogget and adult. Um, and the way we write an ASBV is we always have the um, age stage that comes first and then the um, trait comes second. So for birth weight we would have B and then WT for weight. Post weaning fat depth, P fat, uh, yearling greasy fleece weight, Y, GF, W for greasy fleece weight. Worm egg count will be W for weaning and then WEC for WEC. So then how do we get an ASBV on an animal? Um, we record pedigree on the animal, um, we measure the animal and we need to make sure that we have linkage, so connections between our flock and other flocks. So to calculate an ASBV, if we have the animal's own performance um, and the breeding value meets accuracy threshold, how, um, then we can uh, report a breeding value. However, if we don't meet accuracy thresholds, the breeding, that we won't create any breeding value. If uh, we meet accuracy thresholds but we don't meet uh, linkage requirements, then a flock breeding value will be reported. And then if we meet uh, linkage requirements, we can produce an ASBV. So an ASBV is an across flock breeding value. Um, the figures can be compared across all animals within the Merino Select and Land Plan databases. And these animals meet the minimum criteria of an accuracy and, and, and linkage. Flock breeding values means that you can only compare within your flock um, and the linkages aren't good enough to have an across flock evaluation. So genetic linkage allows us to have direct comparison across animals and it's essential for the calculation of a breeding value. Um, and genetic linkage is required across management groups, across years and then across flocks within breeds. We also have uh, selection indexes. Um, this is because breeding objectives include more than one trait. So a selection index combines a number of breeding values into one ranking figure. Um, and the emphasis put on uh, each trait depends on the breeding objective the index has been modelled around. Uh, and this index will give an overall merit or a score to help you achieve a certain production goal. So some of the standard indexes we have available uh, for the maternal indexes we used to have a maternal dollar, dual purpose dollar and SRC dollar. These have been replaced with uh, BLX, MCP and MCP plus. These are based around self-replacing uh, production systems that either have a focus on um, animals that don't have wool or animals that do produce some form of wool and then the MCP plus also includes worm egg count. We have terminal indexes. Um, this includes Carcass Plus and Lamb 2020. These are based on production systems of terminal prime lambs. Uh, we also have Trade Dollar and Export Dollar. And then we have our new Eating Quality Indexes, which are based around Carcass Plus and Lamb 2020, but also include emphasis on eating quality traits, um, including intramuscular fat and shear force. And then we have our Merino Select Indexes. So fibre production is based around um, production systems that's focused on wool um, and retaining weathers for shearings. Uh, merino production is based on a production system where they're retaining uh, weathers for one year and then selling them um, for carcass. And then dual purpose um, is based on a merino production system where their focus is on wool and on meat as well. So using indexes, it's most appropriate to identify an index that suits your breeding objective. Um, and then indexes are used to rank animals um, based on uh, rank animals like a drafting gate. So we say we will select the top 20 animals based on index. Um, but then it's also important to look at the individual ASBVs within that index and then other traits that also impact our breeding programs. So this is just an example of two rams that have the same index value. However, they're there for two very different reasons. Um, the first ram is very good for fertility, so it's 14% for fertility. However, the counterpart below uh, has quite low fertility but is really good for fleece traits. So they're both there uh, ranking quite high on MP plus index. However, they're both there for two very different reasons. So it's really important to look at the individual traits once making selection on index. 
When I'm looking at the sale catalogue on sale day, how will I know if I'm looking at ASBVs or flock breeding values? So an ASBV, um, because they have to meet accuracy thresholds and linkage thresholds, when they're reported they'll have an accuracy figure underneath them. Uh, when we report flock breeding values back to breeders, they don't have an accuracy figure that comes along with them. Um, breeders do actually have the choice if they put accuracy in their catalogues or not. Um, so if there is no accuracy figure that comes along with the um, breeding value, most people will assume that is a flock breeding value.